Good morning, Stein community. Welcome to Thursday morning. It's your host, Pastor Andy, coming to you live from my office here at Sion Lutheran Church located in Lancaster, Minnesota, where it's like negative 20 outside. Um, I don't know. That's, that's the reality we live in. Sometimes it's cold and sometimes it's colder. Uh, learning it firsthand, Northern Minnesota, no joke. Um, being on the plains, there's no wind breaks. It's just cold. Uh, but nonetheless, being Thursday, it's that time in the week when we transition into the weekend, into sermon prep for me, into, uh, you know, figuring out what life means next week and all those things. And I got a really long to-do list just for today, which is awesome. But in terms of encouragement or inspiration or challenge, I'm really kind of at a loss this morning. I have some sermon prep ideas rolling around in my head, but I'm not sure. And that's, that's kind of how it goes sometimes. Sometimes we are faced with a task. Sometimes we're faced with a, an obstacle of sorts, and we just don't know how to get around it, which which path to take that will lead us to the promised land of whatever next obstacle faces us or is waiting just beyond this boulder. There's probably another, or there's a valley, or there's a gorge, or there's a blizzard, or, you know, whatever it is. There's always something. But one of the things that was brought up this week in text study was in the Nehemiah text where the people are being brought back from exile. They're back in their homeland there. You know, they were gone captives to Babylon or Persia or I don't know. I'd have to look it up. But on their return, Nehemiah or Ezra, I can't remember which, is reading the book of Moses to them. And they fall to their faces in worship and praise. And that really struck me. And I don't want to give away too much because I might go this direction for Sunday. And so, like, if you're listening to this now, you would need to listen on Sunday. And we want you to listen on Sunday. Um, but I guess you'll have to tune in to find out. But nonetheless, there is something about the word of God being proclaimed to the returned exiles that moves them, that drives them forward into a state of humility and worship. And it was the law. They didn't have Jesus. There was no proclamation of Jesus. There was no, you know, good news of the Messiah. It was, here's the book of Moses. Here's the law that you have held on to forever, even in exile, here it is again. And they weep and they pray and they fall on their faces and worship. And it, it, it just dawned on me that I haven't seen that in our churches very often. I haven't seen that where I have been anyway, um, in some of my very first encounters with the church, I did um, in the charismatic Pentecostal movement, there was happenings like that. But then as I got into the Lutheran church, it's very rigid. It's very, this is what we do. Like what would happen if we allowed the spirit to move within us, through us, and when we heard the word of God, we let it change us. That the living word of God affected us somehow. That we let it affect us somehow. Because I think what happens is we, even in the listening to the gospel being read, to the readings, the lector is up there reading the word of God. 
it's become a rote ritual. It's like, this is the time in the worship service that somebody's going to go up front, read the scriptures, and then the pastor's going to stand up and talk to us for seven to ten minutes, and then we're going to sing a song. And it just becomes a part of the machine. It It's not the word being spoken to, through, and for you. It's just a part. And so when it comes to this Sunday, wherever you find yourself in earshot of the word, take a breath, pause, and open yourself up to what it could be saying to you. Not as a part of the ritual, not as a part of the church machine, the worship machine, but as a living, breathing word that is presented to you. That's my challenge this week, is to, to pause a moment and be saturated, if you will, in the word of God. So with that, let us pray for just that. Dear God, thank you for the gift of today, even though it's really cold here in Northwest Minnesota. We ask that you be with us as we journey closer to our time of worship, that we may open our hearts, our minds, our spirits and souls to your word, that it becomes more than just a cog in the worship machine, that we are affected by your word. Open our ears, our eyes, our minds and hearts to all that you would have us see, feel, and experience in, with, and through the spirit that you send forth. Be with us as we journey through this day and into the next. Be with those who are cold. Be with those who are without shelter. and Be with those who are sick. We ask all these things in your son's precious name, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Remember, beloved children of God, you are blessed to be a blessing, and that blessing is best served in service to your neighbor. With that being said, I will see you next time whenever the occasion arises. I'll see you when I see you. Adios.